you guys ever wonder about the electrical lines that you see just around your neighborhood, down and alongside the roads? You ever wonder how it gets from the power station all the way to your house or to your place of business? And how does it get down to 120 volts here in the United States? We're gonna cover all that coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the electrical system and what exactly is it? Well, for starters, you should know by now that if you take a motor and you rotate it, it becomes a generator. And when you generate electricity with a generator, you're going to be making AC electricity. And as it rotates, you're rotating a magnet past coils. And when you get a north, to a coil, it's pushing away the electrons, and the south, it's, it's pulling them towards you. So as you rotate it, it creates a sine wave effect. Well, if you take a normal two-pole motor, that's a north and south magnet, you're going to have a normal looking sine wave, as shown here. Your sine wave is going to have a frequency of 60 hertz, that's 60 times per second. So if you want a sine wave to be 60 hertz on a generator, that means that that generator has to rotate at 3600 RPMs because it's 60 times a second times 60 seconds. Now, the US electrical grid is not a single sine wave. In fact, it's three sine waves kind of intermingled and they're offset at 120 degrees from one another. And that makes a more constant power source. It's called a three phase power system. If you see here, on the left, we have a representation of a single phase power supply. And on the right, we have a three phase power supply. There's three independent sine waves. And because the crests of the wave are happening more often, it leads to more power and greater efficiency. See, every time a sine wave crosses the zero point, which is the line in the middle, there's little to no power that's being created or used. So with a three phase system, you can see that you have a constant ripple above and below. So you have constant power. Now, how do you make that kind of constant power? Here, you can see a diagram of a three phase generator. You can see the magnet in the middle along with its magnetic fields. And you see L1, L2, and L3. See on each side, you have part of a coil. And as it rotates, it's activating a next set of coils. It leads to much greater efficiency and greater load balancing on the generator. The neutral is obviously tied to a couple of the coils to finish it off because as you guys know, electricity is always trying to get back to its source. So you have to have a return path that's your neutral. So L1 and L2 and L3, that's what you're going to see at the source. And then it goes to a distribution network or your electrical grid. So your generator stations, it's gonna be a lower voltage, which is then ramped up considerably with step-up transformers so that it can go across transmission lines. We all see these transmission lines. They're gonna be the really high up lines and they're usually on metal towers and they're run at between 150,000 volts to three quarters of a million volts. It's crazy. Those lines are gonna to come to a regional transmission substation where the electricity is going to be stepped down to a more usable and safer level. It then goes to transmission lines where there's going to be a distribution substation, which is going to be closer to your neighborhood. And from there, they're going to step down the electricity to about 7,000 to 12,000 kilovolts. And that's the lines that we all see run behind our houses. Now, why is it that the electrical system is at such a high voltage? And then we have to step it down. Well, you see, when you take electricity and you push it down a line, the higher the voltage, the higher the difference of potential, the less loss you're going to experience. If we ran 120 volt all the way from the electrical generator to your house, it would be practically nothing by the time it gets there. And as you guys should also know, Ohm's law, the lower the voltage, for the same amount of load, 
you're going to have to increase the amount of amps and amps leads to heat and fires and <laughs> everything else. So by running it at a high voltage and then stepping it down periodically, we get greater efficiency. And that's why America has been able to grow out and have all these remote locations is because we can run high voltage a longer distance. Now, when the electrical system gets to your house, it's going to have to go into a step down transformer. And the step down transformer takes the high voltage in through the top and then it runs through a primary coil. And then your secondaries on the transformer are going to run across uh, and it's going to be split. And that's why we call it a split phase or the Edison system. So you're going to have 120 volts, neutral, 120 volts. You can see here in this diagram, although it says 2.4 kilovolts on the left, that's not necessarily always true. Sometimes it is a bit higher, like 7,000 some kilovolts, <laughs> 7,000 some volts. But on the output side, the important thing is to know that we're actually dividing a 240 volt or 220 volt secondary. We're creating a tap in the middle of the transformer, and that tap leads to 120 volts potential and 120 volts potential with a neutral center tap. That is the electrical system that we have here in the United States, and you're going to see it almost everywhere. I want you guys to take notice that we have three lines, one, two, and three. And then there's a tension line up there, which is also a ground line. These right here are called distribution lines. And a distribution line is usually about 12 kilovolts to 7 kilovolts. And you can see that there's a tiny little wire right there, which comes down to this little thing, which is actually a disconnect and a fuse, which then comes down here and it goes down to a transformer, which then steps it down. And it's going to step it down to 240 volts or 220 volts. If you take a notice, you've got one, two, and three. Notice how the top one has got the tap. You see that right there? That line comes down here to your fuse. Only one of these lines is going to be accessed. Now each one of those lines right there is a phase. Only one of the phases is tapped off for this section of the neighborhood. And the important thing to know is that on your distribution network, these phases have to be balanced. So you have equal amount of load on each one of them because you want equal amount of load back at the power station because you don't want a motor or a generator spinning with an unequal amount of resistance. So right here you can see that one of my phases is tapped off, it goes through, right here is a fuse, comes down to my transformer, and then it goes over to my panel. So let's go ahead and take a look over at the panel when it's already at the 220 volts. So the power comes off the step down transformer up here into the meter and the meter acts as not only a metering device to get back to the invoicing company so that they know how much you, they're going to charge you but your meter is also a, a service disconnect so what they'll do is if you don't pay your electric bill they will pull your meter out and they'll put in a blocker plate and the blocker plate prevents electricity from going over here to here and this is my 200 amp General Electric service panel. Now right up here is my main breakers. I do have 200 amps of service and it is an old panel and it is horrible. And that's because uh, it's never been updated. Definitely one of my projects to come up. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at what is going on inside a breaker panel because the electricity is coming over it obviously has to come up to here first this guy feeds down each one of these banks is one of phase or technically it's a split phase system so this is 120 volts to neutral 120 volts to neutral or 220 volts it's borrowing from both sides of the panel and that's how you get your 220 volt service so now that you know how the electrical system gets from the utility plant all the way to your neighborhood. Let's take a look at how it runs into your facility. Now this is for a residential facility. This isn't for a more commercial environment, but you're gonna get the point. Here on the diagram, you can see the 2.4 kilovolts, which isn't necessarily true as I explained earlier. It could be four kilovolts, six kilovolts, could be 12 kilovolts. 
and it stepped down to 240 volts, split phase, the Edison system. One half of that is going to be 120 volts, the other half is going to be 120 volts, which conveniently is going to be mapped out inside your distribution box or your breaker box. Inside the breaker box, take a look at the top, you got two large cables coming in, that is each half of your split phase. So one side's 120 volts to neutral, and the other side's 120 volts to neutral, and you can kind of see that there's two combs that are intermingling but not touching. If you want 120 volt breakers, they're going to connect to only one side of that distribution. On the other side is going to be the other half, and traditionally you want to balance out those two halves. But what if, what if you have a breaker that's going to go to your electrical stove or your electrical dryer or even your air conditioning system, you're going to need both halves of that phase and that is your 240 volt potential. And the way that they achieve that is they have breakers that connect both sides of that distribution. So if you have a breaker that jumpers from one side to the other, you now have the full 240 volt potential. That is going to run to each of your outlets inside your facility and there you have it. So guys, that is a very rough estimate of how electrical is generated, presented to you guys in your neighborhood, at your house, and how it's broken down to 120 volts, what you guys interact with day in and day out. Hope you guys like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have questions about this, maybe if you want me to specify a little bit more, go ahead and write it down below the video. Thanks for watching.